This is the entire skeletal muscle, which is made up of fascicles. Inside each fascicle is a muscle fiber, which contains myofibrils, which is made up of myofilaments, which contain the contractile proteins, actin and myosin. The myofibril is covered by the sarcolemma. The action potential arrives in the axon terminal, and this causes the calcium channels of the membrane to open, allowing for calcium to move into the synaptic knob. The increase in calcium causes the synaptic vesicles, which are filled with acetylcholine, to be fused with the membrane. Then the acetylcholine is released from the synaptic knob into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine is picked up by the acetylcholine receptors on the motor end plate of the skeletal muscle. The next step is for the sodium channels to open up, allowing for sodium ions to pass through the muscle cell fiber. This then results in a depolarization along the muscle fiber. Then the acetylcholine arrays an enzyme breaks down the acetylcholine into acetyl and choline. The increase in the sodium ions inside the muscle cell results in an action potential along the sarcolemma. The action potential travels down the sarcolemma into the T-tubules and stimulates the release of calcium from the terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium is stored in large amounts within calcioclestrin and is then released in the sarcoplasma of the muscle cell. Calcium goes over the thin filaments and binds to troponin. This pulls tropomyosin off of the active site onto the actor. The head of the thick filament is in the high energy state and has ADP and potassium attached. This head then binds with the exposed active sites on the thin filaments forming a cross bridge. It then binds the myosin head causing it to break free from the active site of the thin filament. This ATP is then converted into ADP in a phosphate molecule. The myosin then becomes energized and goes back to its high energy state. And this is when the muscle contracts. The ATP energy allows the calcium to be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, into the T-tubules, and they eventually attach to the calcioclesterin, where the calcium is stored once again in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This allows the tropomyosin to once again cover the active site, causing the muscle to relax. This is the sarcomere, which is the basic unit of functioning styrated muscle. It will con completely contract when the thick and thin filaments slide over each other. The sarcomere is a highly ordered unit of thick and thin fi filaments. The A bands are the dark section of the muscle, and the I bands are the light sections of the muscle. The Z disc is where the thin filaments attach. Lastly, the H zone is a shorter section within the A band.